I know that's difficult to pronounce. So I usually go just with the first name, Slava. I started to use Linux when I was still in high school. And since then, I've worked in uh, different industries, um, aviation, a bit of a telecommunication, metal industry. Um, and that allowed me to contribute to various open source projects, um, Linux kernel, trusted firmware, ARM bootloader, um, and also Yocta project. And now I contributed the overlay FS classes to Open Embedded Core, um, and I try to maintain them. So before we start, what the overlay FS is um, and what it helps us to do, uh, we better understand the problem we are trying to fix here. Uh, and then we go into details how overlay FS works and how we can use it in Yocta. So imagine your embedded device. So what you usually do when you design it, you usually have some partition layout over there. It can be just the whole partition, the whole root of S takes up the whole space, or you can have a root of S partition and then some application data partition. That's just an example. Usually in those two cases, you would have the update mechanism like OS3 or SW update, or I also saw some devices that just use a homegrown update mechanism based on SquashFS images. Or we had heard a lot of talks during the week um, about AB update scheme, where you have one root of fast partition currently active and the other is on standby. You could also have the same layout and same, some application data partition. In that case, we, saw some, we heard some talks during the week about a software update uh, rogue amender, which are used in that configuration. That could be others. That's just an example. That also could be other partition layouts. Now, usually when you have your device, uh, you also have some applications. So the purpose of the device is that it runs something and it's supposed to do something. Um, and it's not always that you develop your application from scratch. Sometimes you develop a next generation of your device, so the application is already there. And there are some, also some services which your device provides, for example, like a DNS service or something else. And your application or service, it always has a writable access to the, either rootfs or some, some configurable partition. In a lot of cases, it just writes to the rootfs, and that could be a problem with the AB update scheme. Because when you update, you update the whole root of S, and the whole user data is gone. So what can we do here? Um, the simple case, and the best case actually, is that you make your application configurable where it writes to. So it doesn't write to the root of S, but it just writes to your data partition or TMPFS if you don't care about the data. But in a lot of cases, it's really not possible to change the application because it's a huge legacy beast or it requires a lot of time and effort, a lot of hard-coded parts in the code. So what can we do here then? Um, the simple case, we can create a symlink which will point then either to a TMPFS or to the application data partition. Um, that works for simple cases. If it's just one or two symlink, that can be manageable. What if there are like dozen places your application writes to? Then it becomes more difficult. Um, the other approach could be a bind mount. So you bind mount the directory, which points again either to TMPFS or to your data partition, and bind and mount back to the root of S. That also solves the problem. Um, but in some cases, and a lot of cases, the path your application writes to already has some predefined configuration, and you want your application to keep that configuration. In that case, overlay FS can be handy. What it does, uh, I explain in a few slides. Uh, then your, your data, which comes from the root of S, is available, and it can write, but the writing will be redirected either to application data or TMPFS, while the application still thinks it writes to the root of S. So what overlay FS is? So that's 
the excerpt from the Wikipedia. When I first read it, like it's an implementation of a union mount file system. I'm like, okay, what is a union mount? And I went further. So union mount is a combination of multiple directories uh, which appear as one. So how does it look like? Um, imagine you have a directory one with files one and two and also five and directory two with five, three and five. When you mount an overlay, you look at it like from the top. So you would see all files present as in one directory while underneath there are two different directories. Um, before I go with an example, how to achieve that in few terminology. Um, so in overlay FS, the lower layer or lower directory tree is the one that appears below. So in this case, that would be directory one here would be considered for overlay FS as a lower layer. It can be read only, it can be read right too, but the writing will not go there. Um, the upper layer or upper directory tree is a directory which appears on top of that. So that's directory two. This can be writable. So, and that's what's interesting in our case. If you want to redirect the writings of our application to another partition. Uh, the limitation for directory two that it has to support extended system attributes. So in that case, the NFS is actually not supported because it does not support it. And then we have the mount mounted overlay or merged layer, so to say. That will be this one. Um, another interesting term is a write outs or a back object. I will show that later how it's used. Um, this is a final directory which is marked on the upper layer as removed because we have a transparency that uh, application can do whatever it wants in overlay. It can read, write, it also can remove. And those modifications are stored on the upper layer. Now an example, um, that's our directory one with two files or three files and directory two. Um, you see there's file five, which is present on both directories and the content is different. So that's a file from directory one, file from directory two. So now the command to mount an overlay looks like that. Uh, you mount the file system type overlay and then you mount a special type overlay. So that's, those are different things. That's the thing you mount, that's a file system type. This is where you mount to directory tree. And the whole configuration which we just discussed, lower layer, upper layer, that goes in the options. So lower layer would be directory one, lower deer, Upper deer would be directory two. And then there's a special argument called work deer. You have to specify that in order for overlay to work. Um, the limitation here that the work deer has to be on the same file system where directory two is. I just duplicated the mount comment again, just to see upper and lower deer. And that's how directory three would look like after we mount it. It would have all the five files and if we see that content of file file, it's going to be the one from the upper layer. Now that's, that's a removal case. If we remove file from the overlay, we take for example file one, um, and we see that it is still present on the lower layer. So lower layer is not touched here. But on the directory two, a special device is created with the major and minor number zeros. It's a special character device. And this is a write out. That's how it marked on the upper layer that the file is removed from an overlay. So you see here in the overlay, it's not displayed anymore. This is a bit more difficult example. Now we have, we unmount the overlay and create a few subdirectories to see how the directory is handled. We create subdirectory one and two in the lower layer and subdirectory two in the upper layer. And if we mount it again, we see that they are present on the mounted overlay. Um, but we have here two subdirectories. So 
Right now they're empty, but if they had some files, the content of subdirectory too would be merged too. Now this is an important thing to note. I will mention it also later. If you want to do any modifications on the layers of the overlay, it has to be done offline. So OLFS does not support changes when the overlay is mounted. Well, it says, the def official documentation says that the behavior is undefined when you do that. It will not cause a crash, but if you want to have some modifications, you have to first unmount an overlay. And that's another test. We remove a subdirectory one from mounted overlay, and then we create it again. Um, Please ignore this for now. So if we take a look at the directory two, that's an upper layer, with the command get f atrib, this one with the parameter dash m dash, this should list all the extended attributes on the file system. So that's what we want to do. That lists only the attributes. It does not list the values of those attributes. And we remove the subdirectory one, and you see it got the attribute of pack. That means if we now and mount an overlay and create anything in subdirectory one on the lower layer, it will not be displayed on our overlay because it was re already removed from the overlay. So whatever is displayed in subdirectory one would be from the upper layer. So lower layer in this case is hidden. Now this test again, um, if we do that offline, we create that file. Um, and this file on the overlay, the subdirectory two gets the attribute origin. That means the files from the lower layer will not be hidden. You see them here on the mounted overlay. Those, those attributes, uh, I think they have some values. Um, you can see them, but that's, that's implementation specific. If you add minus D option to dump the values of those extended attributes, you see some value. But that's not really interesting for now to see how, how it's implemented. Yeah, now what do you need to do in the kernel? Um, that's a simple, in your dev config, in the Yocto, you just define overlay FS, yes. Or if you use the Linux Yocto, you can also use kernel features, which would be features overlay FS and just overlay FS SCC. That does exactly the same thing. Those are special features of all IFS. Um, for the use case I'm describing here, they're not really interesting. Even more, they should stay disabled. Because remember our use case when we want to update the entire file system, A, B, update. And imagine that our application got a new config file in the mounted overlay. So that config file obviously goes under the lower layer when the file system is updated and the upper layer would be our data partition. So the tricky part here is that this is allowed when all those features are off. And they should stay off. Uh, it's either you disable them in the kernel configuration or you provide uh, mount options to explicitly mount an overlay with all of them are off. And this is, there was actually a bug in the kernel. Regardless of what was written in the documentation, uh, it was still not possible to get those files after you update the system. They were not visible. Uh, that was fixed in kernel 5.15. The um, patch was uh, accepted upstream. So if you use an older kernel, uh, I think there were three patches. And you have to backport it to an older kernel. So that, that's actually excerpt from the documentation again. That's what I said. So if you do online modifications to the layer, their behavior is undefined. You might see them, might not. It will not result in a crash or deadlock, but I wouldn't go into the undefined area here. Right, and how do we use it in Yocto? Um, there are several ways. Depends on your system configuration. Um, you have possibility to use it in InutramFS. There's a recipe volatile binds and the classes overlayFS and overlayFS etc. For the initramFS, the recipe is located in uh, open embedded core, um, recipe score, init rd scripts. Uh, you have to include the package initramFS module overlay root 
And then when you boot such kind of system, you have to provide the kernel argument root RW, which would be, which should point to your data partition. And that would mount uh, an overlay for you. Um, it does not require image feature to be read only, but I think if you're using initrama fast, most likely it is. Um, the volatile binds. Uh, the recipe has been there all along, and the name is actually a bit misleading um, because it doesn't mention any overlay. So what it does, you have to include, um, not include, you have to provide the BB append, and in your layer, you would just extend volatile binds variable with two parameters and the new line separator. That would be your upper layer. That would be your lower layer. And at the same time, that would be a mount point. So if you uh, imagine the picture I showed before, that would be the director one, that would be director two, and that at the same time would be merged overlay. So this you will still see as a, mounted, uh, as a content of an mounted overlay merged with the changes that your application writes, and you steal the application writes back to the same location. Um, if you use systemd, volatile binds is already included implicitly in your image. And basically, like, it's, it's, it's a BB of a band. So it works on a layer basis. If you enable a layer in your configuration, then mount points are created, or if you disable them, not created. But that is a tricky part. So like I said, the recipe is called volatile binds. So originally, it created only bind mounts. So how it works now, it tries to mount an overlay. And if it's not successful, in case, I don't know, overlay uh, is not enabled in the kernel, one example, then it rolls back to an old behavior. It copies everything from the original directory to the uh, upper layer. It's not going to be upper layer, it's going to be bind mounted later back. That's the original behavior and you still can use it. So, yeah, but the downside, uh, the default configuration uh, works only when your rootfs is read only. So the the template for, for the systemd unit or for, for the implementation checks that the file system is read-only. If it's not, it just skips it. And yeah, you, that's just for me. You have to know it exists, so the name doesn't say anything, how to use it, and uh, it's not really obvious when you want to achieve something like that. Um, now, regarding overlay FS class. So, I contributed it, I think at the same time, like when Volatile Binds was uh, extended with the overlay FS support. What you need to do is a bit more tricky, but it's more generic at the same time. Um, in your recipe, in your application, you inherit the overlay FS class and you specify overlay FS writable path with the key. And this would be the list of your directories you want to mount as an overlay. Now, in your machine configuration, you would have OLFS mount point with the same key. And this would be the mount point to your data partition. So why is, why is it the keys? So because you might have several overlays. You might have one data partition. You might have another overlay which points to TMPFS. For example, for the data you don't care, but you still want to write uh, your application to be transparent, to have transparent writing, to try to root FS. <coughs> and then in your distro configuration, you just uh, add the distro feature over the FS. So what it does behind the scenes, um, it has a lot of QA checks that you have this mount point already available, um, that you properly, def if you, for example, define only this, but not this, you will get an error. Um, there, there are a couple of unit tests already covered in Open Embedded Core to, to make sure that works correctly. And it works on the recipe basis. So if you do not include that re your application recipe, which uses that class, then the overlay mount points will simply not be created. Um, it works for systemd only. Um, I did not implement it for other uh, init managers. And it works regardless if the 
um, lower, layers, lower layer is read-only or read-write. So that way you can have uh, several testable configuration and make sure your overlays are always there. Um, another class is overlay FS EDC. I saw a lot of people actually ask for that feature because the possibility of uh, mounted overlays on application basis is good, but you might have some services which want to write to EDC. And that is a bit tricky part because the first thing uh, which is done when the system boots, it starts the system view or your init manager, and that takes the, like ownership of the ETC. You cannot do anything after that. You cannot remount the ETC. Um, what you need to do in your image recipe is in add a feature over the FS ETC. And then in the machine configuration, you specify the mount point and the device. This is needed, of course, because it's one of the first things which is done after boot to mount your data partition. Most likely that's gonna match with if you use overlay FS class, with the, those paths gonna match with that. And what's happening behind the scene, there's a template script which uh, runs first thing after boot instead of your init manager, then performs the mounting and remount ETC for the overlay. And then hands over back to your original init manager. Yeah, this, this is useful, but you also have to keep in mind. So if you, um, um, if you do debugging, you need to make sure and keep, keep in mind that all writes go to overlay. And uh, if you want to restore something, uh, you could just unmount your, uh, your overlays and restore the content. With ETC, it's not really possible. Uh, I recently contributed a fix that the original ETC content is also available for read-only purposes if you want to restore something. Now, regarding more debugging techniques uh, and useful utilities, there's this OverlayFX prox repository on the Git, GitHub, which provides a fast check overlay utility. Um, there's also a recipe for that in Meta Open Embedded. Um, I didn't work with that extensively. I think it checks the validity of the upper layer that all the attributes are written correctly. Uh, there is another repository which is called um, OverlayFS Tools. It provides more interesting uh, utilities which you can use. And the recipe is also available on the MetaHub and Embedded. Um, that's again a comment from me um, because you see the name seems to be the same tools or procs and actually, the, the make file is always, almost the same. It just compiles in the same way. I try to contact the maintainers, uh, but they don't really respond. Um, maybe it makes sense to combine both projects and just have one tools which provide all of them. Um, if you know how to do that, please feel free to contact me. <laughs> yeah, and there's another one, which is called XFS Test. The, the name actually doesn't say that it's overlay fast related but it's hosted on the kernel git repository. What it provides is provide a lot of file system tests. So it's a big QA test suite. Uh, if you find a bug in OverlayFS, um, you would use that recipe and meta open embedded. And that test suite has a lot of OverlayFS related unit tests, so to say, and which you could use if you find a bug in the kernel in the OLFS implementation to check that everything still matches with the expected behavior. If you had a new feature, of course, you would need to extend the test too. And the patches and bug fixes should be sent to that mailing list address. Yeah, those are the articles and the official documentation. And those are two main maintainers of um, OLFS. Um, yeah, I think that was it for me. Um, thank you very much. If you have any questions, maybe I missed something, forgot something. <laughs> yeah? Um, can you uh, explain what the work directory is? Um, I think that's something that OverlayFS does internally. Uh, so the question was what work directory, what's this work directory for? Um, uh, whenever I always check it 
contents, it was empty, so probably it's needed at runtime. So I don't have insights what is happening behind the scenes. Yeah, but the source code is available. Yeah, the source code is in Linux kernel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so when the, I'm, just, I'm pretty sure when the system D starts, yeah. it uses a lot of an ETC, and you cannot yeah. remount it anymore. I didn't try, but I think that might fail. Okay. The question, the question was, what's special about ETC? Yeah. Yep. Uh, how do you use, for example, like ETC overlay and then do updates? Because you said that you're not supposed to change the the load. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is how, how is ETC affected after the update, correct? Yeah. Um, so when you do the AB update scheme, you update a standby partition, and then after reboot, the lower layer basically is changed offline, it's not online. And whatever files you had on the upper layer, of course, take precedence, that will be your modified configuration. If you need to change something and take it from the new update, uh, that has to be done manually and handled manually with some update hooks. But, but For example, there are no problems with inodes being changed and stuff like that. No, no, because those changes are offline. You reboot the system to uh, to a new standby partition. Yeah. So the question is, can you modify the upper directory? Yeah, directly. Online or offline? Yeah. So offline, again, no problem. Online, um, so like I said, behavior is undefined. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the question in the back. Um, you said that you can't use an NFS mount as part of the uh, As an upper layer. As, a, as an upper layer. Yeah. Um, so the question is, can you export the uh, NFS director and use it as an upper layer, right? I think so, yeah. Um, that's a good question. I haven't tried that. Um, okay. So that was not my use case because we are on an embedded device. I didn't need to export NFS here. Oh, sorry. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one more question. So when, uh, when using the extra features for overlay as a yeah. ETC, uh, so if it's done then completely before system D starts, for example, I know a problem with uh, the machine ID, I'm not sure I understood the question. Uh, can, so when, when you use extended features of WorldFS, um, would that be problematic in that case, you mean? Um, I mean, um, do you have extra mechanisms to, to do demounting before system D start um, doing stuff at ETC? Um, that's a good question. So um, is there any mechanism for the uh, overlay to be mounted properly, right? Uh, I think there was a fix recently for the overlay FS ETC class that now all the features are switched off to your in mounting. That I could contribute the same for the overlay FS class, but for the ETC that's the case. So they are switched off already. Yeah, one more question. So is that a question or just no, comment? No, <laughs> comment, okay. So for me personally, the message is if, if you can modify your application, that would be the easiest way. If you can't, simply combine mounts. Otherwise, you should use overlay FS. But you see there are a lot of tricky parts here and a lot of details you have to keep in mind.
Yeah, so no more questions. Thank you very much.